from ordinary people who are doing extraordinary things. From tech startup CEOs and marketing professionals to authors, investors, and sales trainers, this show will be packed with information to help you level up in life or business, taking you from on fire up to lava hot. Get ready to burn this mother down. Hello and welcome to the Lava Hot Podcast. I'm your host, Joseph Connell. Uh, today, we're going to talk about business growth and marketing. Uh, that two things that I love to discuss, and I especially love cutting it up with people that have experience in the marketing space. Uh, the gentleman that I have joining me today uh, is a guy that I found on TikTok. As most people know, that's a, a platform where you're able to just find just about anything about any topic. And this guy popped up in my For You page. Uh, I fell in love with the the content that he was putting out, immediately followed. We were able to connect and I was able to to ask him to come on to the show. But real quick, let me tell you a little bit about Brad Ball. He's the founder of Liquis Digital. It's a family owned and operated web and marketing agency. He has over 14 years of experience uh, coming to me from Arizona. Brad, welcome to the show. Awesome. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate it. Yep. Yes, sir. So I love having marketers on my show being a guy that's in marketing it's it you know it's an easy conversation for me to have but what i want to do is i want to go into a little bit of your background the type of businesses that you've worked with and then i'm hoping we can progress yeah. that into trends in marketing obviously you're using vi uh, video to expand your reach so i want to tap on a little bit of that but also you know the digital landscape is always changing so i'm hoping that we can dive into some of the changes that are happening uh google is for me that's the area that people should always be paying attention to because something always changes there's a phrase i like to use finished never is because it's never finished it's always right. going to be changing and you always need to be able yeah. to be nimble and adapt to those changes but brad if you want uh if you can just go ahead and share with me uh, a little bit of your background and then we'll kind of kind of yeah. roll it in from there yeah so where to start right we uh we started this business back in uh 08 you know i think right when social media was just kicking off <laughs> so yeah. uh, we primarily work in web design in uh, marketing and lead gen and yeah we really do um i do a lot of TikTok and reels and really leveraging video right now these days with TikTok and reels it's just the best way to get eyeballs you know, I've met some of the, my best connections on TikTok, which is not really even why I started out on there. So, um, yeah. yeah, it's, you know, really what we do. We work with all different types of um, companies in all different industries from nonprofits. Uh, we've worked on big international campaigns all the way to the small mom and pop startups. And um, yeah, I just I think what my joy is and what I do is is helping. Right. So our our mission is to always be helping. So helping our clients, helping um, in our community and then helping our team grow. So that is kind of like what we do and why we do it. Um, but so we work with all different types of companies. I just love to sit across the table and I still get goosebumps when we're having that conversation and they're like, it starts to click for them. Like, oh yeah, oh, yeah. I can see. Yeah, you know, it's like, yes. When you, when you come up with that strategy, you come up with that path for them and they like finally get it and you're like, okay. That's right. move forward. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, the unfortunate part about digital marketing is that it can get watered down a good bit, you oh, know, yeah. because you yeah. get a lot of industries that have never traditionally been in the landscape of digital marketing. They may have come from like a traditional media, you know, whether it's billboard or TV or what have you. And then they they partner with a company that can do digital marketing mm -hmm. and they're trying to get their feet wet, if you will, yeah, in that right. space because it's a revenue grab for them. And oftentimes they'll really overlook some of the, you know, the 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 main things that need to happen in order to have either a great presence or really drive results and how to track the results and put the transparency yeah. into the digital marketing. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for me, and it seems like it's uh, very much so for you, I love when I sit down with a client and I really assess what it is that they're trying to accomplish. And then you can really start to tailor out exactly what needs to happen for that yes. digital marketing campaign to be successful. Right. Yep. Absolutely. 
And that's what I find is typically when you sit down with somebody, a lot of it isn't necessarily the tools in the toolbox. So we like to look at like Facebook ads and Instagram ads and, and Google ads and email marketing and, you know, social media. All of this stuff is all just tools in the toolbox. So what right. I like to do is like sit down and be like, okay, what is the problem? Who is your audience and what is the message? Because that's the foundation. And then what tools are we gonna use to accomplish the goals and the business objectives. And I feel like that's the approach where some agencies miss, right? They just kind of like, okay, well, this is what we do and we perfected this. So we're going to try to fit you into that and make it work. And that was, yeah, that was a very good way of putting it. Cause that's absolutely right. You're this type of business. So cookie cutter, you must be, you know, a, right. a great uh, type of company to be able to fit into this product. But you're absolutely right. It, at the core of it, oftentimes the things that will get overlooked is, you know, what does your customers' customers care about? You exactly. know, and then how do you put that into the message? How do you right. tailor out the unique sales proposition of this business yeah. so that it connects with that correct mm -hmm. audience? And then how yes. do we find them? And so. business owners don't know the answer to those questions. Like they're good at the product and service that they deliver, but they're not good at knowing how to sell it, like knowing what the value is and how to make that come across in a marketing campaign and have those things like figured out and that messaging on their yep. website and in their social media and in their marketing. Yep. Yeah. You know, in, in the 10 years that I've been in the marketing space, um, you know, the one thing that I always do in kind of like my planning and preparation of working with a client is I will sit down and I, I start by writing out, okay, well, what do they sell? You know, if it if it's yeah. HVAC, you know, they sell new installation, they sell a service plan, most likely they sell, you know, individual service and repair, and then mm -hmm. maybe ductless mini splits. So they got, you know, four profit centers that are ideal for them. Well, each yes. one of those customers might look a little bit different for one. Yeah. And then the other thing is, you know, what does each one of those customers care about? And I'll sit down there and list, you know, if I was that customer, you know, let's say the HVAC goes out, it's the middle of the summer, you know, what does that customer care about? They exactly. care about same day. Right. <laughs> do, do, yeah. do you have, you know, the parts that are required in order to get that job done same day? Yes. You know, yep. um, you know, did you answer the phone? Do you offer a free estimate? You know, all these yeah. different things that really right. start to tailor out what what that USP can be for a company. Because if you're talking to one guy and he's like, oh, we're two, three days out. Well, you're not going to help the guy that needs right. emergency service. You exactly. know, it, we can't even tailor a message to that guy because the, the A type customer, the ones that will really spend the money for you to get out there right away, you, you can't connect with them if you got to be out there in two or three yeah. days. So totally. all of that stuff yep. goes into play for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. So, oh so tell me, uh, you know, um, I, I noticed web development. Uh, I would imagine a lot of what you do, uh, do you get into SEO as well? Yeah, yeah, we do. We do SEO um, with all of our websites that we build. We, you know, do on-site search engine optimization um, yeah. as part of the the go live or the launch. Um, but we also do offer like an ongoing marketing, you know, local SEO and organic SEO. Yeah. So, so maybe you can tell me, you know, any any new trends that you've noticed. Uh, you know, in, in the landscape of SEO, best practices, things that businesses should consider, you know, as we progress, you know, through the rest of 2022 into 2023, uh, any changes you've noticed uh, that might be important for them to know about? Yeah, so I do. So I've, I really, I mean, I don't think the organic SEO and all of that, you know, all that's kind of and what it is and still the same and you know yeah, local yeah. seo i mean i really think it's a it's important to understand the difference and which one you should be focusing on because if you're a local service business then you should be really focusing on local seo and not spending all of your time and attention on organic seo however um i would say the biggest change lately is just the seo when it comes to tiktok right and not to like keep going all the way yeah. all in on tiktok but tiktok is now becoming that search engine especially for the newer generation um i find myself now as an older generation going to tiktok and searching things um it Absolutely. is and i think that's part of their tiktok's mission now and i think they publicly stated that that they are looking to be now a the search engine and that's changing. They're changing their, their platform to be a search engine. So yeah. um, when it comes to search, I, I don't think the, you know, 
all of the um, SEO agencies and I don't think everyone's there yet. I don't think, you know, they're bought in. I, so I think there's a lot of opportunity right now to really, you know, start, you know, offering that as a service. Yeah. Fact, I have yeah. a client right now I met with earlier today where that was a big topic of ours, where we were talking about longevity and, and leveraging TikTok as a search engine. Right. So. Yeah. You know, to piggyback on what you're saying, just in case there's, you know, a, a business owner listening to this episode and they're like, what does he mean by TikTok SEO? I want to break that down yeah. to yeah. the rawest form and a case scenario of of me using TikTok SEO. Uh, I, I travel frequently down to South Florida. And when I go down there, I don't go on Google and look for the best restaurants. I go on TikTok and search restaurants, Miami, restaurants, Aventura, Florida, restaurants, uh, Fort Lauderdale. And I might even narrow it down based on type of restaurant, best sushi restaurant in Miami. And mm. based on that search query in TikTok, it will bring back search results of videos for that local market of those type of businesses. So it's doing what you've traditionally done on Google, gone on there and said, sushi restaurants near me, sushi restaurants, Miami. It's just yeah. being hyper focused on exactly where you want that search to go. Mm -hmm. And then that video is doing the the proper things to make it so that they rank and that they come up right. in, that, in that search query on TikTok with whatever video it is, which I love this idea. You know, it, it's yeah, it, it's right. such a better search because right. oftentimes the video might be from the business itself, but it, yeah. many times it's from users. Exactly. Yeah. That have actually been to this place. And when yeah. we went to, we took the kids to Orlando, my wife planned out every restaurant we went to yep. while we were in Orlando based on TikTok searches, not based on uh, Google searches. Exactly. And doesn't it feel so much more organic and real, you know, yeah, when it's yeah. coming from a user and the result that's returned, you're not just getting a, a web page or you're not just getting some text and you're going to have to kind of scroll through and, and figure and you're just getting the information you want in, in this video, you know, so it's just, it's so much more organic and effective. Absolutely. And, and you know, there's something to be said, um, even in some of that traditional way of doing a search on Google. And I by no means think that that's ever going away. No, no, but, no, no. but there is something to be said about when you do that search for the best sushi restaurant. Now you got to click into each one of their websites. You got to yeah. see if they have what you're looking for on the menu or you got to, you know, maybe check the reviews. TikTok makes it very easy. You get to see a picture of the food, the, the atmosphere, yeah. the location. You get a live person talking about you know, their experience at the restaurant. Yeah. And it's just a very cool way of being able yeah. to get your business in front of new people right. in a way that yeah. costs absolutely nothing. But yeah. what what are some of the, the things that you think a business should consider if they start, you know, here locally, I, I live in Ocean City, Maryland. Uh, we're a seasonal town. We have a lot of restaurants, a lot of people, a lot of tourists yeah. that come to the market. You know, if if there's a local bar and restaurant and they're thinking, Hey, I want to figure out how I can, you know, get my business found a little bit better on, on TikTok. Right. What are some of the things they should start considering to increase their TikTok SEO? Yeah, well, absolutely. So there's a couple technical things, but I think one thing is to think about before you even start the video is to script out the video, but think about the user and their intent. What are they searching for? And this isn't anything new when it comes to SEO and in marketing, you know, knowing your user's intent and their search intent, you know, what are they searching for? So then it's going to give you some better results and better answers on what kind of keywords you should be using. So once right. you kind of get with the, what those figured out, then now you kind of know, okay, I'm going to script this video based off of this intent. Like they're, they want to know, like the example you gave earlier, um, you know, best sushi, sushi restaurant in you know, South Florida or whatever. Sure. Um, Right. So now, you know, their intent. Now, you know what keywords to use. Now you're going to put those keywords in what you say in your captions, in your hashtags and in the meta description or the description, which, by the way, TikTok just opened it up to 2000 characters in wow. their description. So that what that's telling you right there that they really want you to give more text so they can get more about what this video is about. Yeah. So use the keywords in there. And then I think what a lot of people forget is when you 
go to save or publish that video, you can put on, I think what they call a cover and put the keyword in there. Like not just a keyword, but what are they gonna search for? One of my most popular videos is, you know, what to post on TikTok. So kind of a given, right? Like if you're on TikTok and you're gonna search, like one of the top things you would search for is what to, what to search on TikTok. That's like my right. most hit video I did like months and months ago. And it's because it just keeps coming up in people's searches. You just got to keep cool. creating content. And then obviously then that's where you're going to start pulling up into these searches. Yeah. You know, so, so what you're talking about here, a, a good place where they might even be able to start is by looking at maybe their Google analytics and trying to understand, or like a Google keyword planner and trying to understand how people are searching in their local environment, you know, whether yes. that's, you know, restaurants, Ocean City yeah. or Scottsdale, Arizona, um, right. you know, trying to look at the search behavior of people from there and then they can right. start to plan out videos yeah. and, you know, just even if they got to batch it and just try to come up with, you know, exactly. a variety of different ones or looking locally for a, a micro influencer, somebody that has a decent size right. following in their local market. And, you know, if I, if I have a, a crab cake company here in Ocean City, I might pull you know, somebody that has a great following in the area, have them come in, do a great, you know, video review. Probably. <laughs> That's the woes of having a podcast. From home. <laughs> That's great. I would probably even uh, consider throwing them some coin. That way they can, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, come in, try the food, give a good review, make a, make a quality video that feels very authentic and organic. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I, I would try to look for as many of those opportunities as possible. 100%. Yep. 100%. And I mean, you could even roll it into your, you know, why people are there at your restaurant, you know, like you're saying, and like give that yeah, giveaway, like, hey, if you guys, you know, post a TikTok video, well, 50% off your bill or whatever it would be, you know, now you're like incentivizing people to, you know, leave, yep. Yep. basically Absolutely. leave a review, right? You know, so yeah, there's some yep. huge opportunities there. Yeah. So, so what are some of the businesses that you think, um, should really start considering this? Like, because right. I've heard this just cause I work with a lot of home service companies and they'll say, you know, but does that really apply for me? Like how many people are going to go to TikTok and do that type of search? And totally. I, I firmly, I'm a firm believer that it's better to be early, <laughs> early right. to the game, right. yeah. uh, than late to the game. Yeah. It's a free platform. So you can you can start posting right now and it costs yep. absolutely nothing. Exactly. I also think that, you know, let's say you have a video that goes viral and it gets known yeah. in parts of the country that really are not relevant to you yeah. as a business. Mm -hmm. I'm a firm believer if you can get known nationally, you'll definitely get known locally. Oh, 100 percent. And yep. people are always traveling, right? Like, so, yep. yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I would definitely, you know, I would love your take on that, you know, for for some businesses that might be sitting on the fence thinking, you know what, is this really for yeah. my type of business? You know, I, I would love yep. your feedback on that. So I agree, right? There are some businesses where, you know, yeah, does it make sense right now? Um, but my argument would be just like what you said. Yes. Like getting in early. So if you were, um, you know, think about like back in the day when YouTube was just coming out, you know, like, people were like, yeah, you know, my audience isn't out there on on YouTube. Well, if you were an early adopter on YouTube and now you were like posting videos and getting that content out there, then, you know, we all know you would have had like great success. Now it's going to be a lot harder. Um, TikTok, it's just early, it's early stages. So I think all businesses have an opportunity to do it. Um, you know, I just recently started following a pizza company and he like blesses the pizza and I, I can't remember like what the account is, but it's like, and he has this accent and, um, you know, I think he's in Wisconsin or something. I don't know, but I just follow it. I don't even know. I like it. It's just fun. Right. We just, I just watch it and I follow it. And if I ever right. would go to where he's at, I'm obviously going to check it out because maybe I can get in his videos and be a part of what he's got going on. I, I outside of just restaurants, I really think a lot of industries, um, could get into this, especially home services, because a lot of homeowners have would love to see the behind the scenes of like how it works or the ins and outs. And how many times as a homeowner have you gone to YouTube and searched something to understand how things work or what you should do exactly. or how to look out for things? Like, why would you not put that educational content out there early? Maybe people aren't using TikTok yet 
for searches, but when they start, then you have that content. You know what? And to piggyback on that, I've got two thoughts. The, the first thought is any one of those videos you start to put out, you can repurpose and put on your Facebook. You can put it on Instagram. Mm -hmm. You can put it on YouTube shorts, which I have this thought and I, I haven't seen anything that backs this up. This is just my feeling that this is what's going to happen. I believe that eventually YouTube shorts are going to start getting indexed in search results based on your search. So if you search yeah. for HVAC contractor, oh, yeah. Scottsdale, Arizona, yeah. I believe that at some point YouTube right. shorts are going to pop up in that search result yeah. as an option yeah. in, in the ranking. That makes me believe that what I just said has to happen oh, because yeah. Google definitely, I, I would just imagine that they would eventually start to prioritize YouTube yes. shorts mm -hmm. once they actually get to, you know, maybe even near the mass that you have yeah. with, uh, with, uh, TikTok. Right. Um, you know, yep. the other, the other part of what I was going to say in creating the content, especially like how you said the behind the scenes stuff, yeah. uh, I always use a great example when people ask me, you know, do you really think that people want to see behind the scenes of, you know, my HVAC right. or my plumbing company or, or, or my glass company? And the answer is, Absolutely. Yes. And the best example I can give for that is the show Dirty Jobs. Dirty yeah. Jobs and Undercover Boss, millions of people would tune in to watch these shows for one simple thing. Right. They just wanted to see that behind the scenes. And, you know, people love that stuff. And that's why certain videos will just blow up. You know, it'd be a power washing company that's, you know, I will admit some of those videos are just really, really satisfying watching those right. power washing ones. But yeah. I think that there's some... Mm -hmm. I'll say satisfying videos that any industry can come up with, you oh, know, yeah. that they can start putting out that would have yeah. some sense of virality. Exactly. Oh, 100%. There's always something people always want to see behind the scenes. And those people that want to see behind the scenes are likely to be your next customer. You're so. absolutely right. Yeah. Especially, you know, if they've developed some sort of connection to your business or your brand, or, um, you know, hopefully if you're the business yeah. owner, or you're at least a, a certain individual within the organization that has yeah. stepped up as the personality of the business. Right. You know, hopefully yeah. they start to connect with that personality and they think, oh yeah, I definitely want to, you know, buy yeah. from this individual. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I would say gone are the days of the influencer and now it's all about the creator and that organic content, you know, just being real and transparent. That's what people want to see. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. And, you know, and I think that's what birth, uh, you know, these micro influencers, because yeah. people that are local to your market, you know, yeah. if they're local to your market and they're creating videos or in that case of, you know, me doing the search in Miami, yeah. that individual might have been a micro influencer. They might have had a decent size yeah. following for the Miami market and right. just yeah. happened to put out a lot of content for their local market. Yeah. And that's what I stumbled across. Exactly. Yeah, one hundred percent. I I am right there with you. I, I'm a, I'm a big fan of a uh, of video marketing, but I, I love that you went down the road of you know the more important thing on SEO to consider that's outside of the norm would right. be the TikTok SEO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I I just think it's it, that's where everything is kind of going, and all of the platforms are moving to that. They're trying to get there. Yeah. Uh, there are they are there, you know. So yeah. every platform has some reels or shorts even uh, pinterest has idea pins like they all got their their thing with tiktok and now maybe tiktok will eventually not be the thing and, and will become oversaturated however it's just going to go to the next thing you know so it's not about the platform i think it's more about the 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 style of content that yeah. the messaging behind the content and and not being the fake instagram like oh we're going to put on our front and you're going to see what we want you to see where it's like more this is real authentic content. So I want to ask this because not, you know, your, your average, uh, business owner, your local to midsize guy, they might not yeah. have, you know, like I've seen your videos, very high quality, great audio, yeah. great, great Thank camera. You. Um, you know, lighting, everything looks yeah. superb, but uh, your, your local to midsize company, they don't need all that. Right? No. And in fact, I almost feel like sometimes like the, the nice looking video with the lighting and the good camera and all that, I could, almost say is kind of hurts you a little bit on on TikTok, right? I feel mm -hmm. like that more just like using your phone, like authentic feel 
mm -hmm. is going to work better. That's yeah. what yeah. really works. Like if you look at my account, I have some, yeah, I got decent videos. However, we are like a, a marketing agency and, you know, obviously we want to kind of portray that, that, you know, yeah, best foot that forward. Vision, yeah. Right. Yep. You know, whereas like the average person I feel like would do just as good, if not better by just using their phone. Yep. you know, and in getting decent lighting and your phone's actually pretty good these days. So I know, I, I, decent lighting, you kind of got it going on. Yeah. You know, some, of, some of the people that I follow, you know, a lot of them, you know, maybe they get a, a ring light or some sort of added right. lighting. Mm -hmm. Uh, but a lot of it's just shot right. You know, the iPhone camera, especially, you know, yeah. 13 and 14. I mean, they're just yeah. incredible. It's like they're designing them knowing that people are using them for these platforms. Oh, yeah. And yeah. It's just, you know, the, the camera quality is incredible. And if you don't have, you know, a, a, a good uh, a, a lighting uh, setup or something yeah. like that, we do all have natural lighting. So that's always something exactly. that's available. But but yeah, I mean, not everything yeah. needs to be, you know, pretty and polished. In fact, yeah. to your point, I think most people connect when it seems like it's this guy's just like me. Yep. It, it, you know, that's it. Yep. Yeah, you know, they, they put on, you know, their pants one leg at a time, just like I do. Yeah. They use their camera yeah. the same way I do. You know, it's a little yeah. bit more of that intimate connection. So, And that's, what I think, what is the biggest shock for people when they first go to TikTok. And I feel like the people that come from Instagram to TikTok have a hard time making that adjustment because what you do on, what you used to do on Instagram where it was all like polished and, you know, you, it's different on TikTok. Yep. It's, it's just real. And I think that's where it's going to go. So, yeah. So I know, but, um, before we, we hopped on and hit record on this episode, we were, we actually talked briefly about, you know, there's this marketing side, but then there's also this business growth side. I was hoping you could talk a little bit to that. Like some of the things, some of the yeah. strategies that businesses should maybe consider incorporating into their business to try to help with, with the growth, because, you know, as well as I do, that growth in a business goes beyond just the marketing side. I mean, there's a number right. of different areas that lead to the scalability of a company. But, you know, I would love for you to hit on some of the things that you've seen in yeah. working with companies that uh, that I believe would add value. Absolutely. So we recently just did this uh, business growth series. So it's kind of like this collaboration of all of these things that we've seen and that we've experienced as entrepreneurs and, and business owners. And what we see, because we, as a marketer, we work with a lot of different businesses and business owners of all shapes and all sizes. So we get to see like what people are struggling with and where they're stuck. And there's a handful of things that I find that typically businesses are stuck. And one of the big ones is just being patient. So especially in today's world, the way things work, we all are looking for that like quick win and that quick, quick results. And it's almost like I see these businesses come in with these goals and they're new or they're maybe, you know, trying to get to a certain point and they're, they're so close. Like it's just a matter of like breaking through and sometimes it just takes right. a little bit and you get this place where you're comparing and you're looking at other accounts and you're looking at their numbers and it's not there, you're not there and you're going, you're going and it's just, you you're not being patient enough, right? Like you, if you would just give it another three months, another two weeks, another, you know, whatever, that could be the breaking point and they're just stopping short. A lot of that I think is just be comparing yourself to others and having this expectation that they're there. You should be there. You know, yeah. if I like our podcast, if I were to look at our podcast and our numbers are probably not anything close to some of the other ones, but however, I'm going out there with like, I'm getting ready to record uh, episode 80 where they're right. recording like 280, right? So <laughs> you're absolutely you, right. You yep. know, it's like being patient. So like they might have had the same numbers I had when they were doing number 80. I don't know because no one shares that, you know, but we all look at where other people are at and we're just not patient. Being exactly. patient in your business, I think is the biggest thing. And yeah. I think it was down to be. Yeah. Focused. And you, you know, uh, two things I would say, because, you know, obviously my podcast is very green. We launched it earlier this year. People will yeah. oftentimes ask me, well, you know, what's the numbers that it's doing? 45. And they were like, yeah. what do you mean 45? Episode 45. <laughs> yeah. Episode 45 of 106 was our goal for the year. That's where we are. I right. don't I don't get lost in the sauce. Like yeah. I try not to focus because it which takes me to the other side, which is, you know, what's your intentions with it? What, what what's your goal right. behind it? My goal is yeah. to try to bring as much value as possible exactly. in every yeah. episode that I bring to bring value to the guests that I have on and also 
uh, and more importantly, value to the people that listen to the show. Yeah. If that happens, it's a success. Right. And the other side is, you know, for me, um, you know, surprise, surprise, it is a marketing vehicle for me. It is yeah. something that I, I actually love and I enjoy doing. And it's yeah. a vehicle that that gets my name out there. Uh, Grant Cardone yeah. says, it, if you don't know me, you can't flow me. And yeah. since yeah. I've launched the podcast, it has been fruitful in that regard where, you know, right. I, I might not have thousands of sponsors saying, hey, right. we want to, you know, we want to sponsor your show. Yeah. But I have people saying, hey, I want to talk to you about right. marketing. Yeah. I want you to come in and, you know, let's yeah. discuss, you know, this aspect mm -hmm. of my business that exactly. happens, you know, yeah. and for me, you know, that's more than enough, you know, so when it comes yeah. to the numbers, sure. Would I like some Joe Rogan type numbers? Well, sure. Uh, yeah. I think we all would, <laughs> but yeah. you know, I, I, I'm intentional on what it is that I'm trying to do. And yeah. the numbers I'm trying to hit is 106 episodes for this year. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm well behind. So when, you know, when you say, you know, be patient and all that, you're absolutely right. I mean, it, right. when I did my first episode, I, I, I damn near quit. I was like, man, I'm, I'm no good at this. I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> and, right. I even look at I, our episodes and I'm like, I, I need to get better. <laughs> yeah. I, you know what I mean? But that's a self growth. Like, of course. And I'll look back in another year, two years, like, oh my God, I need to get better. You know, like, <laughs> perfectly put. Better. Yeah. Every yeah. episode, man, I gotta get better. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think that, you know, I think that that should be the position of whatever it is you're trying to undertake. If yeah. you're trying to undertake, you know, TikTok videos. Right. Just, Great example. Same uh, thing. A, a fellow podcaster told me this right before I got started. And this was back in November of last year. And I told him, well, I'm going to launch the, uh, January 1st, which I did end up doing against his right. advice. But he was like, why aren't you starting now? And I was like, well, because, you know, I don't have this ready and this ready. And he said, you're right. Yeah. Um, why not just get started now? Because you j yeah. it's about quantity and getting through and going through the paces of, you know, mm -hmm. getting uncomfortable and going through the paces of learning. He was like, if you got started now, you'd be a month ahead, <laughs> a yeah. month and a half ahead of where you yeah. be, where you'll be if you start in January. But, you know, wow. that was the main piece of advice he gave me. And his podcast is about two years old. He's about almost 300 episodes he's put out. And he yeah. said, it's a frequency game. You know, oh, the more man. you do, the more you're going to learn. And yep. If you can get through the numbers as fast as possible, try to be intentional, try to have quality, exactly. try to bring value, focus yeah. on that. Everything else will come in, but you want to try mm -hmm. to get the quantity up as fast as possible. It's all focus. about that consistency, right? Like that consistency allows you to build that being persistent and allows you to grow and and you have to be consistent and you have to just look at the numbers as a guide like what's working what's not but not as a you know we need to be here by you know the certain amount of time like you just, you're gonna have to give it time but yep yep absolutely yep. And sometimes it's about outlasting other others and this is a little cynical <laughs> Right. But like, if you think about it, like mo if you're, let's talk podcasts, like most, if you're trying to be in a certain niche, like a lot of podcasts just don't make it past a certain number of episodes because they don't get there and they give up too early. So if you can just outlast those guys, yep. that's all you got to do. You know, yeah, I, I actually, I posted something about that, uh, like a week or two ago and yeah. it, I believe it was about 80 to 90 percent of all podcasts never get past episode 20. right yeah that if you want to be considered in the top i think right. it's like the top 10 or top five percent mm -hmm. of all podcasts you will produce it's like 32 episodes if you go beyond 32 or something like that right. you're in you're like you're already in progression to be in the top like one yeah. percent because while yeah. there are millions of podcasts out there meaning right. you know john's podcast that he started three years ago and hasn't published yeah. an episode in you know 18 months right or you know exactly you know there's a lot of podcasts out there uh but not a lot that are still running you know exactly. and you're absolutely right i think just staying yep. in the game you know it, it makes all yeah. the difference so yeah. you know and that goes me, with everything most businesses don't make it past the five-year mark i think yeah. 80 percent of businesses don't make it past five years so you know, I mean, just, you just got to get past these certain milestones. Just keep going. I mean, we've been yeah. going for 14 years and there's been some years in there where I'm just like, oh, I don't know if we're going to make it. <laughs> you <Yeah. know? laughs> yeah. It's not all rainbows and sunshine, right? Like it's, it's tough stuff. Yeah. Yeah. No, if you're 14 years, I mean, you were, you know, 2008 housing crash and, you know, right. you, were, you were going through some of the, some of the yeah. bad parts.
we had nowhere to go uh, but eight, up. nine and ten i mean they were they were pretty rough so yeah exactly that, yeah that's a rough time to start too because that means you started when did you start back in uh it was august of, it was yeah it was 08 august of 08. 08 eight it was yeah it was eight eight oh eight wow yeah our so. our and our anniversary that's when we started the company and yeah and I had a, a, a good paying job. Like I was an application analyst in the healthcare industry and I was kind of at a point where I was getting ready for a promotion. And um, I decided that I always wanted to have my own business. So it was either take the promotion because once I take that promotion, I step up, I'm not going to probably step back down. Yeah. So it was either jump ship and start a business or take the promotion. And I jump shipped and yeah. Yep. You know, we started yeah, the business. Yeah. yeah. I know. The other piece I find with with this is with businesses is honestly the getting out of your own way. And I don't know if you've experienced this, but I know for me, one of my biggest things was just getting out of my own way and understanding that I was in my way. And if you're a business owner and you don't already you don't know that you're in your own way, then you probably are already in your own way. So, mm-hmm. and that could show up in so many different ways from like imposter syndrome or, or mindset issues and, you know, like your ability to delegate. I mean, so many different things. Um, you know, I think one of the best things I did was hired a business coach, but not just any type of business coach. I think it was the, uh, the mindset business coach, because if right. you don't have the right mindset going into a business or you're not going to, you can get all the business advice you want, but if it's these things that are holding you back, that are keeping your company from growing, you'll never overcome it. Yep. You know, I, I I had a guest on, um, this was like a couple of months ago and, uh, very similar. He was a business consultant. And one of the things that he said that kind of stuck with me is oftentimes when he works with a business, you know, let's say they have a a person in a leadership role and, but there's this long-term relationship that's been built there throughout the history of the company. And sometimes you almost have to give that business owner permission to do the things like they, like if they need to fire somebody that has just been kind of toxic in their relationship, but it's hard to let that person go because of a personal relationship. Sometimes having that outsider come in gives them that like permission that they felt they need it to get out of their own way to actually make that yeah. hard decision because there are, you know, as a, you know, as a business owner, there's hard decisions that you have to make. And, you know, right. naturally, yeah. you know, especially if it's something, you know, to that extreme where you're letting somebody go, you know, sure. that, that impacts right. yep. you oh, yeah. in maybe some emotional capacity, but it also impacts mm-hmm. that person, you know, their, you know, their family and all of that. So it's all, oh, all types of things that play into it. But, but yeah, yeah I, I'm a big advocate for any sort of uh, professional coaching, but especially the type that right. really gets in there and helps you out in the mindset of some of those bigger and harder decisions. Oh yeah. Make. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think it was, um, it, it's funny because I've referred a few of uh, my friends who are business owners to my business coach. And there's this common thread that they, and I, I hate to say this, but we, everyone, everyone has been brought to tears that has had this coach <laughs> because they realize like, oh my gosh, yeah, okay. I'm in, I am, I am totally in my own way and yep. you don't even realize it, but yeah, yep. it's a hard, some hard realizations sometimes. Yep. And I, I, it just holds businesses back and, yeah, well, holding, and it holds your whole team back, right? It's not just you, your problems, your issues as a business owner, as a leader, affect the whole team, affect the whole business. Yeah. Just so I know, uh, cause I, I know obviously you do the, the marketing side and the digital marketing side. Um, is that a part of what you do within your business as well as maybe some of that coaching side or do you just, actually, uh, no, we, we actually, we don't No, We don't like if I, if I had, uh, I saw one of our clients like needed it or, but, but we don't offer it as like a service or anything like that. Um, yeah, yeah. no, no, it's just, the, no. The one, the one area that I have seen um, and I've had clients ask me about, and maybe it's just because, uh, you know, I've been a, a salesman, if you will, for the last 10 mm-hmm. years. Um, it's funny because, you know, sometimes that it, it's almost like that word, it's like a cuss word, but I, I have such admiration for salespeople, you know, because I, I right. it drives yeah. the economy. Oh, and, yeah. uh, you know, the one thing that I, I get questioned on oftentimes when I'm working with a business, because when you're doing you know, when you're really handling their, their marketing and you're helping them get more phone calls, get more customers in, 
some mm-hmm. of the questions actually evolved to, hey, you know, we're having a problem where it seems like the phone's ringing a lot, but then, you know, yeah. it doesn't go anywhere. Like we're not getting the lead to turn over into right. an actual customer or a booked appointment. Yep. We, can we listen to some of the call tracking results and just get a feel for like what's happening, like where the breakdown wow. is, what we can do to try to increase conversions. And I've done that for a few accounts yeah. where, you know, I'll look at it and I'll say like, well, I mean, you know, the, the, the woman answering the phone isn't exactly the nicest person in the world. <laughs> right. You know, that right. might be a part of it, you know, and maybe right. it doesn't seem like they're, you know, answering or, you know, answering mm-hmm. the questions that they have or offering to help with certain areas. Like there's certain things yeah. that you can put into your answering script that will yes. really send that yeah. customer on a journey to becoming a customer. And right. we want to try to, you know, try to set up the girls for success up front exactly. so that, yeah. you know, they're not just getting phone calls and churning because in certain yeah. industries, a phone call, digital marketing world, a phone call, you know, an average for certain industries, you know, $50, $75 a lead. Right. You know? yep. And if that lead turned into absolutely nothing but a hung up phone, that was right. a very expensive phone call. Exactly. So. Yes. Yep, yep, totally. And uh, most businesses aren't equipped with that individual in their business that is going to get that phone call and be able to turn it into a sale. So yep. having some sales training, I think, is is huge. Yep. And there's a, a ton of sources out there nowadays. I oh, mean, yeah. you, the TikTok <laughs> is a great yeah. one. I'm sure if you go, you know, oh, if you're yeah. a business owner and you're thinking, oh, my God, my that sounds like my girl that answers the phone. And, mm-hmm. you know, you know, she's not the nicest girl in the world. Uh, sometimes, you know, whatever it is, you know, you yeah. might want to go on TikTok and, you know, maybe even look for, you know, the best way to answer a phone for a service based company, best way to answer the phone for a, a dentist office, whatever it is. Yes, and right. I'm sure that you're going to find oh, something. Yeah. If you don't find it there, go to YouTube. Oh, you it's out there. there. Yeah. yeah, There's something out there and you'll probably find some sort of coaching, something that you're looking for. And yeah. oftentimes, that's the beauty of the internet is oftentimes you'll get the answers you're looking for. And usually it will be free because people are just putting out the content. So somebody said this recently, and I, I think that is so true. Um, you know, they were asked, I think it was Gary, you know, why do you put out some of your best stuff, like your best way to market your yeah. best strategy, yeah. all of it. And he said, because yeah. most people won't do anything with it. Right. You exactly. Know? They'll exactly. watch the video and then they'll not right. apply any of it. So, right. Oh yeah. Oh, you can give out your best stuff. Don't yeah. worry about that. Like always give out your best stuff because it's, it's just going to add credibility for you. Like, yeah. yeah. And they'll and, end up hiring you to do it. If yeah, you're the one that gave the good advice. Yeah. And for any business owners that's thinking, man, I don't want to give out my best stuff. Like, you know, maybe how we do estimates or something like that. Do it because your competitors won't do it anyway. And right. even if they do, we're in an abundant world. There, there's always right. more than enough to go around. There totally is. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Brad, I, you know, I, for some reason, I don't have my clock up here to let me know how far into this episode we are, but it feels like we've been cutting it up for a good while. <laughs> so as we round to the end of this episode, I always like to give every guest an opportunity to just share, you know, a, a little bit about their business, where people can can follow you where they can yeah. find you and how they can connect with the agency you know should they want to go that road um but yeah i'll turn that over to you absolutely you know what we are here to give businesses peace of mind and provide um, a predictable flow of quality pay or uh, quality customers into their business so they can go to bed at night and not have to worry about if their business is going to continue to grow so that's really our mission our mission is here to to help business owners. Um, we have a podcast to the Liquid Digital Marketing Podcast, which you can find on our website, which is liquidsdigital.com. Um, we give out all of our best information. Um, we have a Facebook group also you can connect with us. Uh, it's all on the website. Um, yeah, we honestly, we're here to help. I, I just love helping. Um, if I didn't have a business helping people, I would still be out there helping. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what we do, you know. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I want to ask about that. The the Facebook uh, group, um, you yeah. know, is that open to anybody and everybody? Totally open. Yep. Cool. Yep. Cool. It's totally it, open. I think it, uh, the right now it's it's called uh, motivated business owners. Um, so yeah, it's it's if you go to um, our 
any of our social bios and click the link, you'll see, you know, get on our, our Facebook group. Um, yeah, it's just a place to connect offline. Um, you know, it's still growing. It's not a huge group. Um, it's all business owners. I'll get in there. I'll do lives. I'll do deeper dives into what our podcast episodes are about and, you know, Very do cool. free website and, and marketing audits and, you know, just kind of be a uh, help for people, you know, and then, yep, just kind of a community of, you know, to help people grow. That's yep. our goal. Yep. Cool. Very cool. Yep. Yeah. And for anybody listening, if they're trying to connect, uh, connect with Brad, just know that in, in the show notes uh, on whatever streaming platform you're listening to this on or on, you know, if you're watching this on YouTube, wherever you're watching it in the show notes, I'm going to make sure that we have links to his website, to his podcast, to, you know, his TikTok, IG, LinkedIn, uh, and also to the Facebook group. So anywhere you want to try to find them, I'll make sure that we have it all listed out there for you. That way, you know, easy, just click a button and you're ready to roll. But Brad, I appreciate you taking some time to, to come Thank on you. here, talk marketing with me. Uh, I Absolutely. love that you, you went into that, that TikTok SEO. You're the first guest that I've had and uh, I've had several from yeah. the, the TikTok, you know, yeah, <laughs> really that have come on the show. Not one of them has brought up TikTok SEO. I'm glad that this Good. conversation transitioned into that. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, awesome. I think it was a, a great tidbit of information, but everything else you brought, I think it was tremendous value. So with that, Perfect. I appreciate well, I'm glad to be here. On. Thank you for having me on. You've been listening to the Lava Hot Podcast with Joseph Connell Jr. Do you want to level up your business in 2022? Then visit us at golavahot.com for a free marketing analysis. Show.